Hi guys and welcome to Thankful Thursdays with me, Kel. So this week it's just me and I'm going to apologise for the last two weeks I haven't done a video. So last week my computer broke and I couldn't make a video and I was completely stressed by my computer being broke because I'm the kind of person that's usually glued to my PC. And then the week before that I was quite ill with some of the things I've mentioned in a few of the previous videos. Hopefully I'm back and I'm going to stay healthy enough to keep doing them. So the question for this week, which is I believe the last week of the four week programme, is how do I learn to be alone and stay safe and healthy? So this is something that I relate quite a lot to in terms of my own recovery because when I was both ill and recovering, my partner who I lived with um, was at university part time and was also working. So I spent a lot of time on my own and so I had to be accountable to myself and not to somebody else during my recovery. I think in a way that was probably the key to me becoming healthy long term. I wasn't reliant on somebody else's support to get through my meal plan to cope with my bad days. I had to learn to do that myself. So how did I do that? I guess it's very difficult to explain but I'm going to try. Some of the things that certainly helped me were things that I've talked about quite a lot in previous videos, things like sticking notes around and sticky notes that remind me of why I'm fighting and what I'm fighting for, encouraging messages from friends. Um, one of the things was I used to stick my counsellor's business card to the fridge so if I got to the fridge or if I got to the cupboard that had the bin in it because I'd also put one there, I'd see it and I'd be reminded of the conversations I'd had with her and I'd be reminded that I needed to eat. So that was one thing that helped me. And something else that helped me was to be able to keep track of how I was doing and for that to be accountable to nobody but me. So. I kept a log on the computer of my eating and I didn't actually write down what I ate, all I did was mark it off that I had ate a meal or I had eaten a snack or whatever that was. So I knew if I'd managed three meals and three snacks or if I'd not done so well and I'd missed a meal or missed a snack or something so that I could kind of keep track of that. And also so if I needed to I could take that to somebody and share it with them and I don't think that I ever did. But it was good for it to be there, for me to know that it was there and if anybody asked then there was proof of how well or how bad I was doing. I suppose the single most important thing is your motivation for recovery. Are you recovering for yourself? If you're not recovering for yourself then you're not going to hold yourself accountable for your actions because, well, you're just not. And so you need to be really sure that recovery is what you want and that it is something you're doing for yourself, not something you're doing for somebody else. Um, what else helped me? I think it's possibly been posted in part before that I, um, I wrote a letter to my eating disorder to say goodbye to my eating disorder and I wrote about all the damage it had caused me and how it had tried to control me and it had hurt me and people around me and I'd seen it hurt other people as well so people like you guys with eating disorders and people I met impatient and things like that and that letter really helped me as well I had that stuck on my sticky note board for a while and to see that and to be reminded was quite useful um, what else is good? I think other things that are good is that it's important that if you can't be alone that you say so if you think okay I'm having a really bad day I need some support, I need somebody to be here while I eat or else I'm going to binge and purge or starve. Then contact somebody. There's no shame in saying I can't be alone right now and I need some support. But it's your choice to whether you do that or not. You know that if you ask for that support then you're going to have to eat and not binge and not purge. And so it's difficult to ask for that support. But if you really want recovery, then sometimes you're going to have to do that. Or even maybe, I think when I was in university, I used to take what food I ate to 
sort of an area where people were sat eating so that I didn't feel alone in that even though I was alone that was something that helped me and so I think I was quite paranoid that people would notice if I didn't eat because it was quite known around uni that I was ill so that helped me as well to go and sit in a space where other people were eating when I could do that um, what else helped me stay accountable? In terms of other damaging behaviours that come with eating disorders, I also kind of gave myself weekly small rewards for managing to go without any sort of damaging behaviours of specific types, and I won't be specific in this video, or whatever that might be to you, so to go without, I don't know what might be relevant to you, to go without diet pills or laxatives or to not hurt yourself something like that and so when I went a week without a behavior that I was trying to stop I'd treat myself and usually for me and I've mentioned this before as well I'd go get my nails done and they are real so I'd go get my nails done and that's one thing I've always been able to feel okay in treating myself to and I felt okay in, in doing for myself so I'd go and get my nails done and as I got further into recovery it became I got my nails done once a month for going with out behaviours which is absolutely huge the first time I knew I'd gone a month but things like that giving yourself small incentives I think is really helpful so definitely definitely consider that one and I think also to just be honest with yourself you're not going to get it 100%, 100% of the time. And that would be insane to expect of yourself. Even now, I consider myself to be completely, completely recovered. Life sometimes gets in the way. And you cannot use that as an excuse to engage in eating disorder behaviours. Also, sometimes it means things don't go according to plan. And you can't keep blaming yourself for that either. And that's something that I've had to learn quite recently because I've started to go back to work. So hopefully a few of those suggestions have been of some use. I wasn't exactly sure what to talk about in this video. but So that's my thoughts for now and if anybody's got any actual direct specific questions then I'm around for the next couple of days on and off and I'd be quite happy to make an additional video if you guys wanted that. So if you can just comment in the box down here and I'd really be happy to do that or if you want to message me message the channel whatever so take care until next week guys bye